22 reasons why you should consider the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 in 2023. Now, I know this is a very old device. It's four years old, okay? Going on five. But I'm going to tell you right now, this device is definitely still worth picking up in 2023. This device is such, is, is Samsung's, one of Samsung's best. Now, there are a lot of people out there that will consider the Note 9 Samsung's best device they ever made. Now, I don't agree with that, but if you feel as though that's what it is, it's okay. It's not a problem. But this is definitely one of their best. No doubt about it. The most complete note that Samsung has ever made. And it's a shame that they've gotten away from making devices like this because you get so much with this device. OK, now, about a week ago, I decided to take this phone out of the mothballs because I haven't been using it. And I said, you know what, let me put my SIM card back in here and let me just, you know, have myself remember how why I love this phone so much. And I put my SIM card back in it, and I'm telling you, I fell in love with this phone all over again. I'm serious. The battery life was great. The performance was great. The display is great. Everything was great. I just enjoyed it so much. Now I have to put it back in my regular rotation because I forgot how much I enjoyed this device. It's such a great device. But I'm going to give you 22 reasons why you should consider picking it up. Now, there, of course, there are going to be quite a few people out there, maybe, that say, no, this device is too old. You know, no more software updates, no more security updates. You should not even consider it. it's too old. And there's going to be some out there say, look, I don't care what you say. Security patches and software updates are not the biggest deal. It's about value. And that's why I'm getting it. So let me give you the 22 reasons. I feel as though you should consider it if you're still out there looking for a device. All right. Number one. Now, just real quick, it was released in 2018. All right. All right. Now, number one is the price. I've seen this device on Amazon in good condition. Get this one hundred and sixty dollars. Once again, one hundred and sixty dollars in good condition. That's on Amazon. OK. Next price. Now, this is the highest price I've seen for this thing. Now, both both of these both of these prices are for. Um, well, one of them is for renewed. OK, I'm sorry. One sixty for good condition. One ninety nine for excellent condition. Two hundred and ninety nine dollars brand new. So you can still get this device brand new with headphones. Um, S pen tips, the full unboxing experience, what you used to get and you don't get no more, you know, a charger in the box. Yeah. The full unboxing experience you can still get. There, there's, there, there's people out there that are still selling this thing brand new. So you can get the full experience. Now I would get it spanking brand new. That's just me. Okay. No renewed. Now it depends on you. It depends on your financial situation. Now, if you're a person that you just don't have the money like that, and 160 is all you could afford, then go ahead. Or 199, go for it. Because for 199, you can get it in excellent condition. But 300 gets you brand new with all brand new accessories. You get everything that comes in the box. All right. All right. So that's the number one reason why you should consider this device is the price. Number two, it's a flagship device. That means it's top of the line, it's premium. All right. Number three, the build quality. Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and the back with an aluminum frame. It's top notch quality. No doubt about it. Feels really good in the hand. If you're the type of person that don't like cases, you will love the way this device feels in your hand. It feels very, very premium. OK, now, of course, you can see I got a case. I prefer cases. This is Samsung's um, official uh, case, and I love it. It's super super comfortable. I like the way it looks because this is a silver um, Note 5. So I got a silver case and I love this case. It's extremely protective and, you know, got it's, you know, the lips are really high, very, very protective uh, case. So if you're a type of person, I like the case, you'll like that case. Um, I don't know how much it is now, but it could be maybe 
I don't know, 25, 30 bucks now, maybe cheaper. Because, I mean, this phone has been around for a minute. But anyway, so build quality is excellent on this device. It has a nice thickness. It has a nice weight to it. Number four, the always on display. As you can see right here. Now to go back out in a second. You get an always on display that's highly customizable. OK, you can do a whole lot with it. There's a whole lot of options that come with the always on display. As you can see, you can see um, the notifications, the time, date, day, battery percentage. And you got your home button down there that vibrates when you push that. It will um, activate your face unlock along with your iris sensor. But always on display, Samsung makes the best always on display on the market, in my opinion. Some people may disagree with it, but I do believe that they do. Number five is the iris sensor or the iris scanner, or however you want to put it. You press this here. You see that flash up there? That's the iris sensor. It sees your eyes, opens the phone right up. That gives your phone an extra layer of security, very high security, because you know it's one thing about you know face unlock itself is really not that uh secure but sc scanning your eyes that's highly secure and i love that i hated that samsung removed that feature off their devices i really do next face unlock now face unlock also you can use it in concert with the iris sensor or you could just use the iris sensor by itself i prefer to use the iris sensor by itself because it's just a lot better than that of the face unlock samsung face unlock um, it's just not the best for me. Now, the latest one I had was the S21. That's the latest one I had. It was still kind of iffy. It just wasn't consistent. Now, I don't know about the S22, but I prefer to use the iris, iris scanner. It's more secure anyway, and it works 100% of the time, and it works pretty quick. Number seven, the physical fingerprint sensor on the back of the Note 9. Now, there's some people that don't like in display fingerprint sensors i do but they never now i'm not gonna say never but this one is a hundred percent accurate and it's super fast no issues whatsoever none see how fast it is all you do is touch it and it com it, it comes right on very fast a hundred percent accurate some people miss having a physical fingerprint sensor now it's up a little bit too high it should be right about here but I mean, you get used to it. And now if you get a case like this, it'll automatically slide right in there. OK, so I love the fact that it has a fingerprint sensor, a physical one. So that's something you may love for those people that don't like in display fingerprint sensors. Number eight. The three point five millimeter headphone jack, something that Samsung removed when when they went to the Note 10 plus, they totally took it away. And now they've taken it away from even their mid-range devices. So now you can't even get a headphone jack on the mid-range device. And that's sad. Now, I think you can still get on a budget device. But mid-range and premium devices, they remove the headphone jack. A lot of people don't like that. I don't like that. I'm going to continue to talk about it because there was no reason to remove it. This phone is IP68 water and dust resistant with headphone, headphone jack. Why remove it? I love the fact that I took my headphones. I was going to the gym. I took my regular 3.5 um, head, um, headphones and just plugged it right into the back of the phone. No dongle, none of that. Just plugged it right into the phone. So I love that this has a headphone jack. All right. Number nine, the button placement. Now, for me, this is kind of good and bad. Now, you got your power button on the right side and you got your volume rockers on the left now we know that with samsung's newer devices everything is on the right side now remember on this one you still had the bixby button so you had the bixby button just below the volume rockers okay and of course you got your power button on the right now the only issue i have with the power button is that it's just a little bit too high it should be right about here where my thumb is but it's all the way up here so you got to kind of stretch a little bit to get to it now, some the reason why I say button placement, I mention that as a reason why, because some people don't like all their buttons on one side. Some people out there like the, the you know, the buttons separate. They want the volume rockers on one side and they want the power button on the other. So if you're that person that prefers 
the old school way that they um you know put the buttons on the phone then you're gonna love the button placement on the galaxy note 9. number 10 the bluetooth s pen s pen that's in here it's bluetooth compatible now this is the first note that they put the bluetooth uh pin in because now keep in mind you can take pictures with the s pen you can control your volume with the s pen okay volume up and down uh going side to side you could change videos or uh, musical tracks with the bluetooth s pen you could just do so much with this s pen it's just phenomenal i love it o off screen memo just so much stuff you can do with the s pen so that's a bit now that's what makes the note the note at the end of the day is the s pen all right number 11 the dual stereo speakers they're excellent on this phone even though this phone is old they still kick out some good volume. I love the stereo speakers on this device. Dual stereo speakers, okay? Bottom and in the earpiece. Love that. They are very good. And they're not nowhere near as good as the Note 20 Ultra, in my opinion. The Note 20 Ultra speakers are really great. They're super loud and got really good full stereo sound, too. But these are not bad at all. Not at all. Number 12, expandable storage up to one terabyte. And that's a big deal. That's something that's also something Samsung removed from their from their premium devices. I don't like that. That was completely unnecessary, just like the headphone jack. And they took away one of the biggest reasons why a lot of people went to Samsung devices because of the expandable storage. And I don't understand why they keep making these phones with 8K capabilities, knowing that that's going to be a huge file, knowing that people blog. And people use their, <coughs> excuse me, use their phones for blogging. And, you know, they use, a, they, they video a lot. They want to use 4K at 60. Now, I only use 10, 1080p at 60 because I feel as though that's good enough. But there's some people that want to use 4K. I mean, if you have a phone, you want to use all the, the capabilities that it has. And the cap off, you know, the, the remove expandable storage. It's just, it's not right. And I don't like it. And you shouldn't like it either. And you shouldn't accept it. I'm not even buying any of Samsung's um, newer phones anymore unless they bring back expandable storage. I'm not buying them. Now, some people may say, well, what are you going to do? Well, well, a lot of phones don't have expandable storage. I got plenty of phones that got expandable storage. So trust me when I tell you, I don't need Samsung's newer devices with ex without expandable storage. And on top of that, I don't like that they start off at 128. No. You're going to charge people twelve, thirteen hundred dollars. It should start off at five hundred and twelve gigs or two fifty six minimum. Forget that one twenty eight. That's that's that needs to be over with one twenty eight. No, just like with the Note 10 Plus, they went up to two fifty six, which I thought was right based on the price. But then when they came out with the um the Note 20 Ultra, they took away one one uh, two fifty six and went down to one twenty eight, which made no sense. So. If you're the type of person that need expandable storage, you're going to get it on this device up to one terabyte. You could put a terabyte SD card in there and you'll have basically unlimited storage. Number 13, this device has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. I'm, I was getting literally, and I'm, I'm being serious, and Samsung ain't always been the best on battery life, as a lot of you know out there. They're not no battery kings and all that. No, they used to be back with the Note 4 when it first came out before they updated it it was like two days easily but i was getting a, a day and a half with moderate to heavy usage a day and a half of serious and then <laughs> i get better battery life on this than i do my note 20 ultra and that has a 4300 milliamp hour battery or no it has a 4500 milliamp hour battery but i'm getting better battery life on this than my note 20 ultra now that doesn't make any sense all right next you can get six or eight gigs of RAM. Now, this is the eight gig RAM variant or 512 gigs of internal storage. Now, that's going to be hard to find. It's going to be real hard to find the 512 gig variant, but I'm sure it's out there. Maybe you might have to check on eBay because I don't think I've seen the 512 gig variant on Amazon, but it's out there. So you should be able to find one. But this is the eight gig, 512 gig um, internal storage variant. Number 15. This phone supports 15 watt fast wireless charging. Now, 
fast wallet charger is kind of a joke because everything today is just so much faster. But you can fully charge your phone in like two hours and 43 minutes. Okay. Now it's more, it's more so for charging your phone overnight as opposed to trying to quick charge it. Like if you come home from work and you need to go out and you want to throw it on the, on the wireless charger, no, you don't want to do that. You want to plug it up because 15 watts is not that fast. <laughs> but it does have wireless charging for those of you that um, always wanted um, a phone with wireless charging. I know I use wireless charging all the time. I got about what? One, two, three, four, five. I got about five wireless charging stands and I use them. <laughs> so I love wireless charging. All right. Number 16. This device is IP68 water and dust resistant. No issues. We're taking this to the to the water park, to the beach. Now, maybe not heavy, like far out there in the beach because you don't want to go more than five feet. OK, but anything five feet for 30 minutes, you'd be good. So or if you, you know, drop it in the sink, you drop it in the shower, you drop it in the tub, you're good to go. The S pen is also water resistant. So that's excellent. OK. Next, you're getting Samsung Dex. OK, so you can get a laptop experience from this device onto your TV or a smart board or your computer. Love that. I love that Samsung, even though this phone was old, put Samsung Dex on this device so you can enjoy Samsung Dex if you got a Samsung TV. Next, the display. The display is beautiful. It gets adequately bright, as you can see. Now, there's no intrusion at the top. OK, everything is even at the top and the bottom. Now, you know, you got a, a, a little bit of a forehead because you got all those sensors and things underneath there, which some people, a lot of people ain't going to care about as long as they don't have to worry about no punch hole. They don't want no intrusion on their display. So the display on here, as you can see, is excellent. It's adequately bright. You get a thin, you know, a thinner chin, really no bezels on the side at all. The display is beautiful. No problems with the display. You're getting a uh, Super AMOLED Quad HD display. Okay, beautiful. 6.4 inch Super AMOLED Quad HD display. Beautiful. Next, the LED notification sensor. Now, I don't know if you saw that blinking earlier when I had the phone off. Let me see. Is it going to blink now? It's probably not going to blink now because I already opened up the phone, but it's right up there at the top where you can see that little light blinking. It'll be it's actually a combination of the iris sensor and the LED. So that's really the LED notification sensor. That's something also Samsung removed uh, from their devices after they came out with the Note 10 Plus. No LED, no iris sensor. They removed both of those and they removed the headphone jack. So think about that. You ended up paying. Uh, for those of you that remember the Note 10 Plus that bought it, $1,200 for the Note 10 Plus. And they took away the headphone jack, the iris sensor, and the LED notification sensor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, just think about that. Think about that. Charge more money, and they took away things. All right. Number 20, performance. Performance is still great on this phone. I've had no issues with performance at all still. Nice and um, fast, nice and smooth. Now, it's not as fast as the newer devices, but it's fast enough, honestly. I mean, I mean, think, I mean, for this device being this old, it still moves pretty good. I mean, as you can see, it's not like it's lagging out. It's not like it's super slow. It's pretty responsive. I mean, for being a device at this age, it loads up everything pretty good. So I don't have an issue. With the performance none at all now it doesn't have 120 hertz refresh rate a lot of a lot of you probably don't even care about that type of thing but just to let you know performance is great next number 21 the cameras now the cameras on here are still really really good honestly even for 2023 even though there's no wide angle lens keep that in mind but these two sensors are really really good okay now really good. I mean, I've taken some great photos with this camera. So you're not going to have a problem with the camera at all. Not for me. Now, if you're the type of person that you need the latest and the greatest, then you know, you don't want to consider this device. You want 
that, you know, either the No 20 Ultra, the S21 Ultra, or the S22 Ultra. Okay. But the cameras on this phone are really, really good. And last, number 22, One UI. Okay. The One UI, I love it when Samsung went from Samsung, the Samsung experience to One UI because they made it very one handed friendly. And I like that. Now, I forgot to show you something real quick. With the fingerprint sensor, you could just slide down and it'll bring down your notifications. See that? That's like something old school right there because you can't do that now. See that? Just sliding your finger down brings down the notification sensor. I mean, brings down, <laughs> yeah, the notification shade. Sorry about that. All right. So back to One UI. So say you go into here and say you want to go into advanced features. You want to go check out the S Pen. Look how you can easily bring it down where you can easily reach it with your thumb. So it's very one handed friendly. I like that a lot. You know, you could just bring everything down where you can easily get to it. Even when you're dealing with your notifications, see how you could bring everything down. You can easily get to everything. So I like, I like, I love One UI. Now, the things that come with One UI are a lot. That's why I want, you know, I'm saying you should definitely consider this because this device is packed, packed with features, jam packed. Let me just give you a few. <laughs> now, it may seem like a lot and it is a lot, but I'm just being facetious. Check this out. You're going to get edge lighting, edge panels, Samsung wallet, which is used to be Samsung, Samsung pay, Samsung pass link to windows, Bixby routines. Dynamic lock screen wallpapers, one handed mode, call and text on other devices, which I've used. It's cool. You could um, answer calls and send text messages on your uh, say if you have a, a pad, you know, um, like a, I have the Samsung S20 tab tab S S plus. Yeah. Yeah. So I've used that to text messages and I love that you could receive and make text send text messages and calls on your tablet. That's cool. All right. All right. So next pop up windows, smart switch, easy mode, secure folder, smart view, quick share, nearby share, NFC, good lock, which takes your customization to even a higher level, lift to wake, fingerprint sensor gesture, which I showed you just a, just a minute ago. Swipe to call or send messages. You just swipe and it'll automatically call the person or uh, send a uh, text messages. Palm swipe to capture. So you just swipe with your palm and it'll take a, a, um, a screenshot. Dual messenger means you can have more than one Facebook and things like that. You can send, um, send an SOS message, which is good if you get in any trouble. Video enhancer. Make your videos look even better and screen recording. Now, there's still some other things I didn't even mention, but that is a ton of stuff that, you know, you get with one UI. And that's what makes you one UI probably one of the most popular Android skins out there in the market. Now, some people may say it's Oxygen OS. Some people may, you know, like Xiaomi and other ones better, but I think. In my opinion, that Samsung has the best One UI on the market. Now, they don't have the smoothest One UI on the market, but they do as far as features, feature packed. I think probably them, Origin and Color OS, probably the three most customizable skin, Android skins out on the market right now. But my favorite is One UI. That's what will always keep this phone kind of number one for me. It's not because that, say, the Mi 11 Ultra is one of my favorite devices. The only reason why that phone is not number one is just because of the software. Now, I don't dislike the software, but One UI is just better. That's the only reason why the Mi 11 Ultra has not taken over as my number one device from the Note 20 Ultra. And keep in mind, with the Note 20 Ultra, I still have expandable storage, which is important to me. All right. But One UI is all that in the bag of chips in my opinion some people will disagree with that because they are more of a stock vanilla android type of person i'm not never have been never will be all right now let me give you three reasons why you may not want to pick up this device okay just three reasons in my opinion 
All right. Now, I've already given you 22 reasons why you should. Now, the only three reasons why you may not want to consider picking up this device. Number one, there's no wide angle camera. And we know today people take photo even more now than ever before. Everybody wants to, you know, you want to take family photos. You want you want to get more people and more things into a shot when you take it. So if you're the type of person you need a camera with a wide angle lens, this is not the phone for you. Number two, this phone will no longer receive any more software updates. OK, Android 12 it, it, or, or easily with the Android 12, or Android 11 was the last software update for this device. So it's not getting any more software updates. OK, if that matters to you, that don't matter to everybody. It don't really matter to me that much either, as long as my device is still performing well. OK, because you got tons and tons of features that come on the phone automatically. So you don't really need the newest. You may not need the, um, the newest version of one UI. OK. And last, no more security patches. Now, for, for a lot of you out there, that might be a deal breaker. Oh, I need my phone to be secure. Let me show you something real quick, okay? That's not the biggest deal in the world. Let me show you something real quick. Go into settings. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me go to is that battery. Uh, device care. Now, you see this down at the bottom where it says security? You see what it says over there to the right? It says secure. So my device is secure. Okay. See where it says it says unsafe, scan needed, and secure. Well, before I did this video, it said scan needed. I scanned it and scanned it the whole entire phone, and my phone is secure. What's secure? It's secure by McAfee. Okay. Samsung McAfee is securing my device. So my device is secure. Now, if that's not enough for you, you can always do this. Let me think. I brought, I put it up. Let me see. It's my Play Store. Did I lose it? There's something I wanted to show you. Let me see. I probably got to go back a little further. I know I had it in here. I wanted to show you something. I think I must have lost it. Hold up. Let me go back into the Play Store. You could always put a VPN on your device. Maybe I wasn't looking it up on this one. Yeah, I wasn't. I was looking it up on my Note 20 Ultra VPN. You could put a VPN. If you just don't feel like the security that comes with it is enough, you can always download a VPN. Here's it is right here. Thunder VPN. And you could pay like $5.99 a month. Like it's just a few dollars a month to keep your phone 100% secure. If you don't think it's secure enough, you can just download under v there's a bunch of vpns you can download this is just one of them okay look at that secure vpn you got turbo vpn thunder another vpn you got nord vpn i mean there's a lot of them so look at the rating and just download the best one or the one you think you could afford now the thunder vpn that that's right right here 4.8 uh rating so it's very highly rated and it's and it's pretty cheap you can pay 35 bucks per year for the VPN and it 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 it, it secures your, your whole device. Every time you're on the Internet and you're doing things, it completely encrypts all your Internet traffic. So your phone will be 100 percent secure. So you don't need uh, Samsung's security patches for your phone to be secure. First of all, it always it already comes with security on it. Now, if you just don't feel like it's enough, you could always add a VPN. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of benefits to having a VPN. Look it up for yourself and check it out. So those are the 22 reasons why I think you should consider the Note 9 in 2023. Thank you all for taking the time to view this content. I do appreciate it. Please hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you like this content and you want to see more like it in the future. Happy New Year to each and every one of you. And I hope you stay well and I hope you stay safe. God bless you. Peace.